Friends, so today I'm going to be continuing my um, do-it-yourself direct-to-garment printer build. Um, if you want to see more of my videos, uh, click the subscribe button. And if you enjoy my videos or find anything useful, then please click the like button. Those mean a lot to me. If you'd like to know more about how to run or how to salvage a GoPro camera that the battery has gone bad in, I have a video on that. So. Anyway, I'll be using the, the GoPro camera. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and start that now. I have to look to make sure it's actually recording. So, uh, anyway, where we're at is we need to attach the main board. And um, in the Open DTG documents, they suggest that you drill holes. And I don't, I don't want to drill holes. The aluminum's somewhat thick. Um, so what I did is I bought some Velcro tabs. They're one inch by one inch squares, or actually these are seven eighths of an inch squares. And these were like four dollars on Amazon. And um, the this was uh, marked down because the um, package is crushed. Who cares? You know, the package is going to get crushed when I recycle it. So if you've never seen these, these are great. They um, come in two pieces and so I'll do a close up here and basically you peel them off and stick them on whatever you want. Now my favorite way to do this is to pre-assemble them and they're sticky so guess what they stick. Uh, but what I like to do is just kind of put them together and then I can easily reach under and stick them on things and um, I just find this to be more effective. Oops. So I'm going to use four of them under here because I don't think I need more than that. So there's two. And one of the advantages to pre-assembling them is, and I'm going to do two with this next run, is that they wind up lined up. So you, you, when you put them on and they're, they're pre-assembled like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one under and then I'm going to put the other under and then when I stick them down, it's going to firmly seat them and they're going to be automatically lined up. And, and that's just great. And you know what? I think I'm actually going to do six. I'm going to put two in the middle. It's probably overkill, but I'm sure one of these will peel off at some point in the future. Um, now, if I didn't think that the surface was new, it would be a good idea to hit these with an alcohol prep pad. But I don't think that's an issue, so I'm not going to bother with that. So put one here in the middle. I'll put a second one in the middle. This would be a good opportunity if you had a small child for them to help you with this. Uh, I don't have any kids, and my nieces and nephews don't live in Texas. So we're just going to do it like this. Oops. So that gives those where I want them. And now I'm going to just seat these. So when I say seat, I mean I'm just pushing firmly down. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach under here and I'm just going to sort of massage them in place. And I have one that didn't seat. There it goes. So now it's seated in place. So now I've got all six of these in place. And then the thing that's nice about this, if I needed to take this off, I could very easily unplug it and then take it off. So, and now I'm left with a veritable bonus round of Velcro. And that's okay. There, there, this stuff, there's just tons and tons of stuff. This is a fantastic um, form factor for it. So I'll find something to do with that stuff later. And, um, you know, I don't know why they waste the money to print something like this and didn't just print it on the, the packaging. All right, so the next thing I need to do, I'm going to see if I can adjust my small camera here. I need to get my... There we go. I need to install my... 
um, ribbon cables. So I'm going to start in the back and these are labeled so CN4, CN8, CN2, 19, 16, So this is a little bit like a paint by number puzzle and you just need to heed the puzzle and put it together. Um, I'm appearing to have some extras and some things that are missing. So I've got five and four. So five is here and what I'm going to do is just very gently and carefully work this in. Okay. And then again, this is four, which I would have expected. I don't see a four, so I'm not sure where it goes. So 12 goes here, and uh, there's 4. So 4 is right in front of 5, and the label is just a little hard to read. Ten is back here. Eleven is right in front of it. And then I have two. Fifteen and nineteen. And fifteen is in the middle. And nineteen the the marker is off to the side of it. Alright, so that gets all of my ribbon cables except for CN6, and I think 6 is the one that I have a replacement for, so it's okay. So next what I need to do is I left the shim out and um, a little bit working without instructions on this, so um, I'm going to move this and let's see if we can do it from this side. Yeah, we can do it from this side. So. There is a second plate that goes up in here, and you're probably just not going to be able to see a whole lot. So there are wing nuts on the bottom of the platen. All right, so I'm going to carefully get the platen out of here. And you know what, this needs to be done on the other side. So we can get the whole thing out. And I think, do this. All right, so. What this plate does is it raises the platen, and it's literally just that simple to install. All right. So 
So now I'm just going to attach the lock nuts or wing nuts underneath here. I'm just going to get them finger tight. There's four of them and they've all dropped down in here so I'll just find them and put them up in here. As I've said before, this is something that I wish these were thicker because this is, these are just really tiny. And what this should do is shim this up to working height. So we got that done. So I've got my Play-Doh um, 170 nippers. Um, I got these on AliExpress for about 90 cents. So I don't, I don't believe for a second that they're authentic, but they do a good job. So they're really good counterfeits if they're if they're fake. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this wire off because I need more flexibility here than what this assembly is providing. The next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this, so now we're going to play the same exact game looking for a screwdriver. Okay. So I'm going to remove this bracket off the back. Get it eventually. All right, so the purpose of that is now I've got enough clear space that I can mount this with Velcro. So that's what I'm going to do. I told you this stuff comes in handy. So I'm going to prep another square of Velcro. And then I'm going to double check how I want this to fit. I think I can actually use two squares. Now you may be saying, well, why would you use two squares? Well, it's a good question. The reason I use two squares is because I don't think this is real secure and I need all the support I can get. So I'm going to just kind of cram up against one another. it works. Alright, and then as with everything else, I'm just going to make sure this adhesive is firmly seated. And boom, it's done. Alright, so this can go in my recycle, which if the city of Houston was picking up recycling would be great. And let's see, we don't need that, we don't need that, we do need this, and that. Just kind of looking through my box of parts, figuring out what's next. So I'm going to have a little look-see on the inside of this assembly because I want to see how this actually is put together. Okay, so what I want to do is just take. Uh, this is going to drive me nuts not having the right size screws. There we go. I want to see what the inside of this looks like and evaluate whether this could be rehomed somewhere else or if it absolutely has to be on this assembly here. That's interesting.
this is what I was hoping. Come on. There we go. So I'm able to get rid of that whole giant oversized bracket assembly. And in return for this, I just need to relocate this. So I'm going to do that. So there's a little ground clip there. Now there's a risk that without that ground clip this isn't going to work real well, but we'll see. So we've got another little interface board here, and I don't think this one's designed to come apart. Oh yeah, there. Well, it is, but I don't really want to take it apart if I can avoid it. So what I'm going to do is just pry that open, and this serves as a little, and I'm going to make sure that stays there. This is just a little ferrite. Well, this has got to come apart anyway. There we go. Because what I've got to do is I've got to get this out. All right. So what you're left with is this little Wi-Fi, uh, this not Wi-Fi, this little module that contains all the controls, and it is now free to be relocated. So I'm going to put this back on, and this really needs to be taped in place. And we're going to see if we can get this in here. I'm pretty sure they use a special pair of pliers to do this. But we we're able to insert it, so we'll just leave it there. It needs to be secured with something. And now let's look for a place to put it. So, it needs to be in this neighborhood here. I've got more than enough cable for this. do is just mount it here like this and that would require rerouting these cables all the way around. I don't see why we couldn't do that. Alternatively I might just mount it back here. That doesn't have to be there. Yep, that's where it's going to go. So, let me start re rerouting this. If you're keeping track, this has got to be at least the umpteenth time I've moved this little motor. turns out that that screw is exactly the right spot for what I'm about to do next. Oh, that's cool. There's a little There's little like laptop hinges here. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to do any good. Hmm. Well, so um, it's going to be Velcro to the rescue again. I'm going to go ahead and just put this back where I found it. No, 
know. makes the most sense is actually up here. But I need it to be secure. make more sense is a mount for it, but I don't feel like designing one and trying to print it. We're having a fun game of make it work. I think I'm going to dig deeper. I just want to see what's in here and see if there's an answer. There is. There is an answer right there. Okay, so I'll show you what I was able to do here in just a second. But first, I want to put this back in. So by loosening those, I was able to turn these 180 degrees, which is actually what I wanted. So once these are turned around, that gives me a bunch more mounting options. I could potentially mount it right here, although that's not quite as nice as I'd like. This would work just fine. Now, well, other than that. Oh. Well. 
Well, isn't that nice? I'm just looking for a place to mount this to see if one that's really obvious pops up. So I think I'm going to relocate this over here. And in order to do that, I've got to do major surgery on these ribbon cables. Which isn't really as bad as it sounds. So I'm just going to unfold them and pull them out of here one at a time. And then they've got some little adhesive dots that kind of secure them at certain critical points. So we're just going to gently pull these back. And then we'll work on rerouting them. So they are labeled CN1, CN2, and again, it's going to be Velcro to the rescue. And Velcro is going to rescue us in several places here. So one of the things Velcro is going to do for us is mount this and we're going to be pretty liberal with this so CN1 What you don't want to do is drill holes in this because this is a pressure chamber underneath here. Okay, so CN1, CN2. And now let's just see if we can marry these. 
Mm, yeah. I love ingenuity. So we're just going to kind of work our way around. And maybe not quite like that. Oh, I see how these ribbon cables work. Okay, so we need to be on top of this, not underneath it. for that to happen, it's just going to have to stick out like that. Because there's some cables that do a turn here and um, they go into this little thing. back in where we should be and I need to get some zip ties and just kind of secure some things here. So I'm using Harbor Freight's finest 99 cent zip ties. And the first thing I'm going to do is just see if I can fortify this. Now, the goal here is not to apply a lot of pressure, but just to kind of snug this so it stays put. And then double check this can still be opened. Absolutely not designed for that, but it'll work. This can be a little tighter because it is the plastic tray that we're pushing against. And again, we just want to secure Figures. 
So a small screwdriver can help you with routing these zip ties around corners. All right. As I've rerouted this cable over here, I've attached my controls to the top of the ink reservoir. You know, this isn't something that's going to get opened a lot. So hopefully that'll be okay. If it winds up coming off there, I'm going to have issues. So we'll see in a bit. And, um, you know, in the meanwhile, I've just gently routed the cable over here and zip tied it to keep it out of harm's way. Um, and I've still got one more loose cable that I don't quite know what it goes to yet. So we'll get there. So I'm gonna pause for the moment because I need to ask some questions about how to get the power into things. It looks like it just strips and goes in there. Well, that would be interesting. Um, and uh, I gotta figure out where CN1 and CN2 go on this board. And I think It's a nice little stepper motor. I think it goes there, at which point it'll just need to be attached somewhere where it's out of the way. I don't know, I gotta figure that part out. So, let me do some research to figure out what my next steps are. Thanks for watching and uh, I apologize that I don't seem to know what I'm doing, but I am really just kind of figuring this out as I go. Thanks for watching.